What's this, Helldivers 2 steps down? Beloved CEO of Arrowhead Game Studios and Helldivers 2, Johan Peelstead, is stepping down from his position as CEO and taking on another role within the company. And this is going to come as a shock to a lot of people because a lot of folks really like the guy. It's one of the first times that we've had a CEO that we genuinely believe has our interests in mind, and they've shown that for the most part. With that said, their new role is going to, well, be an interesting one to say yeah. the least, and it has a major impact on the future of Helldivers 2. So I want to take a minute to talk about that. Okay. The now former CEO of Arrowhead Game Studios There's tweeted out guy. saying, Hey everyone, big update. I've decided mm -hmm. to hire Et Shams Yorhani as the new CEO of Arrowhead Game Studios. We go way back and I wouldn't trust the business in any other hands than his. And he comes with an impressive resume and a love for games. But what about me and my involvement in Helldivers 2? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm taking the role of Chief Creative Officer, which means I will be spending more time with the team and 100% of my focus on the games and community. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the- I'll bet this last six months for that dude totally fucked up his entire life. Like, you had this game you were making, and then, like, it's just gotten so monumentally fucking successful that, like, now there's, like, a million people trying to talk to you all the time. It's like you were just making the first game was pretty good, and then, like, the second game, oh, my God. And then, like, then there's something that goes wrong. Everybody's fucking messaging you. Everybody on the internet's talking to you. And, like, then after that, you're just, okay, all right, I just want to make the game. I don't want to deal with this. I feel like that's what fucking happened. Because if that was me, that's probably what would have fucking happened. Bunch of details, but Shams Yorhani was a key figure at Paradox Interactive. He was the chief business development officer over there until 2021. He had worked mm -hmm. at the company for 12 years, and he was mostly responsible for managing the company's games portfolio, yeah. identifying new titles, and different developers for them to be able to work with. Games released from Paradox Interactive that are the most notable would be City Skylines and Stellaris. Mm -hmm. So the company was mostly focused in strategic games. Yeah. Now, I think something like this is going to come as a surprise to a lot of people, but also not a surprise at the exact same time because no, of how much so. he cares about the game and the game's community. I know a lot of people have really liked the guy. He's definitely the face of the you know, CEO that we would want these companies to have. And it's probably also like he's thinking that like if he stays CEO, he's going to have to be thinking about three or four different games as much as he's thinking and focusing on Helldivers 2 right now. And he just knows, well, I can't do that. That's too much. So I feel like, yeah, absolutely. That's smart. One that actually has our interests in mind, one that engages with us and mm -hmm. talks to us and wants to know our wants and needs and the things that are paining yeah, us yeah. in some of these games. But more so, his step down is huge for the future of Helldivers 2. You have to keep in mind, when this game came out, before it came out, they were only targeting anywhere from like ten to 40,000 concurrent players yeah, at see, launch. This was That's all yeah. they thought they were going to be serving. The game shot up to 450,000 concurrent players just I remember on... uh, Linus did this in his company, too. This is actually quite common. Steam within the first two weeks. That's absurd. And chances are what ended yeah. up happening as a result of that, it wasn't just the server issues. It was all of the logistical issues of them mm -hmm. balancing the game, managing the community, managing the content that they planned on putting into the game, managing the narrative, everything, everything became an issue at that point because yeah. you're just not built for that kind of scale and you can't scale up fast enough and just hire on people and immediately train them to be able to handle a lot of those issues in the first place. And I'm not being forgiving of many of the issues that Helldivers 2 is you know, faced up into this point. It's not about being forgiving or not. It's like, this is just the way it is. I think it makes a lot of sense what he's saying. Absolutely. It's not even a question. But for them to be able to do what they need to do to get the game into a healthy place and give it a long-lasting future. It's very this common for growth of a small business. The founder, founder hires a CEO. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, for example, like with Starforge and Mythic for us. Like, I'm not the CEO of that. Tips isn't the CEO of that. We have somebody that does that. That's like their job. Because like we can't dedicate that time to that company specifically, right? Like you need somebody, it deserves somebody whose job is to make this as good as it can possibly be. And being able to recognize that in yourself is one of the most important things. It's to know where you are and know where you're not. This is something that was necessary and it's a smart choice by him because him having a direct role, just mm -hmm. paying attention to the team, the development of the game and the ongoing 
health of the game and its community is huge. Yeah. It's going to make a massive difference. And you can see it in the comments of the people that responded to his tweet. Now, looking at some of the replies to Johan Peelstead's tweet, you see one user saying, when you lower your position to be more involved in your game, honestly, that speaks volumes. Peelstead responds, thanks. Games before CEOs? Yeah. Question mark. Another user said, you've been an amazing CEO so far. He has big shoes to fill. But if you chose him, then it must be that he has what it takes. Peelstead responds, thank you. Yes, he is way more organized than me. Yeah, see, there it is, right? Like, he does not want to deal with all the little bits of bullshit. Oh, my God. Like, I know what Tips deals with, right? Because, like, so, I mean, I'm streaming all the time. So I can't deal with as many calls and everything that Tips deals with. Holy fuck, I could never do that. Not in a million years. No way. That's just, that's just not how I am. And I especially couldn't do it and stream. Now I get to focus on games. Another user responds, does this mean that weapon rebalancing will get the attention it deserves with you taking a more involved role? Uh -huh. Peelstead responds, yes, that's the plan. Exactly. Another user says, this is fantastic news. Always good to free up creative people and let someone else handle the business bits. Peelstead responds, yep, I think it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Another user and asks, there are also people that are very creative in business th itself, right? Like we saw that video of the Red Lobster thing. There's some really creative fucks that work at that Golden fucking Gate company. They are extremely fucking creative. Just not necessarily with video games. That's what Will you still did? be active yeah, among is. the community? Peelstead responds, even more so. Another good question that was posted asks, as CCO, what is your direction in receiving and reviewing player feedback? Peelstead responds, very good question. First thing we got to do is ensure we get more devs time playing the game. It's hard to make the right decisions if the eyes aren't on the road. Sec That's one of the biggest problems that I think the game developments has is like whenever I see, I think that if you want to understand why a game has problems, the best way to understand why a game has problems is to have a one hour clip of the person who is in charge of the game playing it unedited, uncut. And the closer that you can get to that, the better you're going to understand why those problems exist. Secondly, I want to ensure that we actively look at the sentiment and create a holistic view of why feedback is given. And my working theory yeah. is that TTK is too high. And this is something that's beyond necessary for the game. There's two weak links mm -hmm. that the game has at the moment, which is that players can only do something and play something for so long before they start getting bored of it, and they just move on to... Oh, Legendary Drops is in chat. Pull me up for a second. I have something to add for the video. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. That's a good video. I mean, I feel like this is something that happens with a lot of people, honestly. Yeah, yeah, this, this is the guy. It's the guy. He's right here. And uh, won't hiring a business person for higher positions harm the game? We see this in a lot of studios, right? Oftentimes, no. Uh, what really generally happens is whenever a studio is is bought out, I think that any sort of a successful um, any sort of a successful business, like I I don't ever like to tell people what to do. If people feel like I'm telling them what to do, there's a problem. So I think that any sort of successful creative work is like a collaborative endeavor. So in an ideal world, no, that's not the case. So with the changes to CEO, I think the whole PSN thing could have been avoided. A creative type trying to negotiate with Sony on that whole thing wouldn't have been able to handle it like a suit talking to a suit. This is actually a pretty, a pretty creative answer. And I think that you're right about this. So like what you're basically saying is that he, you think, I, I bet like, because I bet for a, a CEO transition, this probably would have been like a two month endeavor from like what my experience is and i i think that they were probably planning this before the sony swap but i think that the sony swap definitely uh you know the sony psn thing uh definitely kind of like accelerated it because yeah you're probably right because a person who's like a uh you know more business-minded person is going to think about it in that perspective and like yeah a creative person isn't going to see it in the same way yeah it could also go a negative way yeah actually this is a, a sony swap yeah wh whatever to say like the psn thing and uh, I think this is, you're, you're totally right about this. This is actually a really, really good insight. Yeah, it's 100% true.
He thinks the original CEO wouldn't have the skills to negotiate with Sony. Well, it's also like there's a lot of like mental bandwidth that you need in order to do that. Like you have to be thinking about that and planning for that and like worried about that. Like you're and, and all of that energy is not being put into improving the quality of the game. It's not being put into improving the quality of the product that you're selling. So that's what the issue is. It's a whole mind game. Yeah, exactly play other games and sometimes it's not even getting bored it's just that new games come out we go to play something else exactly. and if there's nothing really interesting happening with the game that we left then we're not likely to go immediately right back to it we might go to back into our backlog or something like that or something else new then pops up and we just never get around to going back to the game and we've noticed that Helldivers 2 is gradually over time lost players and a lot of that has to do with the Sony issue that happened a while back that upset a lot of players a lot of negative it was losing players even before then like if you look at uh when this happened uh let me see if i can find it uh hell divers hell divers 2 and i look at the charts i go to right here it was account linking shenanigans and you see this is it's it, there's even a mark on the steam database it was at one that like it it was already going down. It was already happening. Like, I feel like the account link, like, look at this. There are, like, massive drop-offs. And, and why do these drop-offs happen? Well, it's very simple. It's because people just play the game. Like, the game doesn't really have much of a progression path. So there isn't really, like, the gameplay is the game. It's kind of like Fall Guys in a way, where it's like, you can get new cosmetics and everything, but there's not really a lot of progression in Fall Guys in the same way as there's not really a lot of progression in Helldivers 2, where like you're building a character, you're leveling up, you're not really doing that. So, of course, people are going to play the game enough, they're going to get their fill, and then they're going to want to move on. I think that's pretty normal. Feedback, and it just kind of ruined the whole vibe yeah. around the game. But then also at the exact same time, they have had some massive balancing Having issues. Power world? That yeah. At first were bad, and then were a little bit better, and then just got worse and progressively worse and then worse. And ever since then, the game just started to feel bad to play. And you can't have a game that's a PvE-focused horde shooter feel bad to play. Yeah. And you need the players to be able to fulfill a power fantasy, but at the same time, you want to be able to rein them in because you need the game to feel chaotic and crazy. And you need to so, the new Sony thing br uh, gets brought up too much. The issue was weapon balance. Day one issue never fixed. The uh, Arrowhead devs truly really have an awful and childish take towards gun balance. Gun balance doesn't have anything to do with it, in my opinion. I think that's like probably a minor issue. I think the real reason why people stop playing Helldivers is because there are not enough modes of gameplay and types of gameplay that are varied enough that maintain people's attention. So I think that very, very successful games do this. Very successful games have a lot of modes of gameplay that you kind of uh, shift around from. So like a really great example of this is something like, I guess you could probably say like Roblox, but let's look at World of Warcraft since like we're much more familiar with that. And so you have all of these different types of gameplay and let's say this is raids. And then after you do raids, then you do maybe dungeons. And then after you do dungeons, then maybe you do PvP. And then after you do that, maybe you do mounts. And then maybe after you do that, you do, um, uh, I don't know, transmog, right? Like, and I'm just thinking of random things. Or you're, let's say you're farming gold. And then you go back to raids. So the successful games have a internal ecosystem that's very similar to what i'm explaining here and so also you can apply this to like i'll go ahead and just like create some more examples uh so for poe this is for path of exile uh you've got your maps and then you have bosses and then you go over to delves and then after delves you can do uh delirium and then after delirium you can do Oh, I'm trying to think. Like, what's another type of gameplay for PoE? I'm just kind of drawing a blank right here. Uh, oh, economy, right? Yeah, um, trade. Heist. And then, yeah, he heist is better than delirium. Yeah, heist and then trade. So do you see how, like, every successful game that has long-term 
like uh, player retention has that type of gameplay. And Fortnite has this too, because there's a lot of custom modes and new ways to play Fortnite, and the game constantly reinvents itself all the time to feel like it's a truly fresh and new experience. So, and this is a problem that Diablo 4 runs into right now. I think this is a big Diablo 4 problem, is that running a Nightmare Dungeon feels the same as running a Pit, which feels the same as running a... Um, uh, there's the other thing, doing a Helltide, which feels the same. Like, there's no real boss builds. This is a this is a long-term problem with Diablo 4 that they need to solve. And it took PoE many years to solve this problem. So it's not something you should expect them to do overnight. So every great game, I think, has this. And I think that some BRs have this in... Like, l let's look at PUBG, okay? PUBG, hot dropping, is much different than dropping at military base which is different than dropping and then trying to go for top 10, right? Like, and you're going to play the game very differently in every single one of these, uh, like, these modes. Now, obviously, BR is, like, a much more contained version, but what I'm saying is that the more a game allows you to play the game in different ways, the farther away you get from getting burnt out from playing that one specific type of way. And I can go and create more examples of this over and over and over. But if Helldivers isn't able to do this, the core gameplay loop is amazing, but you need multiple gameplay loops to keep people inside of the ecosystem of the game. I feel like it actually has cost or there's some type of consequences for your actions if you're not playing the game as you should be. And that's something that really needs a focused perspective to be able to fix those core issues as well as start to introduce new content. Yeah. And Helldivers 2 is a game that it really needs a shot in the arm, especially with a lot of the games that are going to be coming out over the summer and definitely a few of the games that are coming out this fall. You're going to need something that's really going to entice players to come back to play your game. And the only way you're going to get that is if you have somebody like Johan Peelstead that cares as much about this game and as much as he does about the community to come back and do something about those things. And right now, it's kind of like he said, it just doesn't feel like there's a lot of people that are at the helm right now because of just how busy he's probably had to be since the release of Helldivers 2. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't have a whole lot of perspective on because yeah, sure. when you have a game it's that blows up in that kind life. of popularity, his side of the business gets very yeah. busy. Because we're not only talking about trying to hire more people or manage the team, but it's also... You're all right, but let's not be obtuse. The PSN thing is what killed this game. I don't think that that's re represented in the data. I don't think the data represents your, like, so if I take this, right, and I, I just, let, let's take a graph, and then uh, we'll go ahead, we're going to copy-paste this over, and I'm sorry if it's not exact, but I think that it's going to be somewhere around about like that, right? So let's go ahead and let's draw a straight line from this point right here, to this point right here. I feel like... I feel like it really didn't... It really didn't do a lot. Make it red? Sure. It just didn't. And I... I look... Yeah, this is the natural slope. Yeah, I like, and and I I like I don't want to argue about this. I'm just saying this is what it shows. This is just the way it is. I think they had content planned for a smaller audience, community, uh, complete objectives, and an unexpected rate. They couldn't make the content fast enough. Yeah, it's probably a good possibility. All the things that he has to do with Sony and uh, any of the regional locks and all of these other different things that really eat up a lot of time for him and mm -hmm. don't allow him to be able to focus on the team, which makes them run wild, which means his creative vision for what Helldivers 2 is supposed to be yeah. isn't probably being met right now. And that's largely the reason why he's stepping down. It's because he has said on multiple occasions that he wants Helldivers 2 to be the best live service game ever made. Then just do that. And yeah, just do that. The only way that he can make that happen is if he steps into a role that doesn't have him worrying about all of these outside distractions, yep. all of these business roles and the money and things like that. And it's just working on the game, working with this team, 
and making sure that he's delivering a game that we all want to play. And for me, this speaks volumes about his character, about the character of Arrowhead Studios. And while the studio has definitely had a lot of issues, especially with their community managers and things like that. Well, I could also see like, you know, as somebody who's had my attention divided among a number of different things, like for many, many points in my life, I oftentimes would feel like I'm doing a disservice to people that I am supposed to be responsible for or supposed to be like helping when I have so many other obligations that I can't fully dedicate my time to solving their problem or solving what my responsibility is for them in the most accurate way. And I'm sure you guys have had this happen too. So I can imagine what it's like for this guy who's the CEO of a company that's made a massively worldwide like phenomenon level success game it's huge is what fixes that this is the exact thing that they need to be able to make sure that this game has a long lasting and a fruitful future yeah. at that and personally i'm looking forward to it i wasn't really expecting to make a video this early in the morning i have my breakfast still sitting in the other room so i'm going to end the video right here i hope you guys enjoyed it if you guys did like the video subscribe to the channel Drop a comment down below on what you think the future of the game is going to be. Outside of that, my friends, stay cool, stay righteous, stay safe. Catch me live on Twitch, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. I think Family. he's totally right. Family. Yeah. Family. 100%. I'll link you guys a video. It's a legendary drops video. You guys, have, we've watched his videos a lot. I think he's great. I'm going to link you guys the uh, video myself. Yeah, there it is. And a very good video. I think he brings up a lot of good points, and I pretty much agree with everything.